This is a really fun little weapon. It's a hammer, and what I like about this particular hammer is extremely sturdy. I've got a 360, and I've chosen brown, and uh, I'm blowing it up. We have about maybe three or four inches on the end. It doesn't matter because I'm going to pop off the excess that I don't want. And then I've got an 11-inch round, and this one I've blown up to about eight or so inches. And you'll notice here that I've tied the knot out close to where the end, the nozzle was. I've trimmed the nozzle already, as I always do. But you can see the excess here. It's not inflated because I tied the knot. Instead of tying it close to the inflated part, I tied it closer to the knot so that I can squish it out because we're going to divide this into two bubbles in a minute. But before we do that, we need to prep this. Get our 360, and what we want to do in it is starting at the end, make two pinch twists. And you want these ahead of time because believe me, it makes life a lot easier in a minute when we do this. We're going to take our 11 inch round and what I'm going to do, and this is why I divided it, I mean I left it loose there, because I'm going to do this. And you want it soft so that you can twist it into two roughly equal bubbles. And the neat thing about this, leaving that on the end, you got to hang on to it, is when you do this, you get one end that goes very round and the other kind of lengthens it out. So you've got two separate ends on the size of your hammer. Now we're going to take our 360, be sure to hang on to that 11 inch round. And we're going to wrap it around and you want it fairly snug so it will keep that 11 inch round from coming untwisted. And you're going to bring it all the way back around and twist it into those two pinch twists on itself there. Just like that. Go around the next two times to make sure it's insecure. And then I'm going to position the two pinch twists. Now you can see my hands are out of the way. One in the front, one in the back. So it holds it in place. And what I'll do, I've got this excess on the end. I'll figure out how long I want my hammer to be. And I'm just going to remove that excess. Tie that off. There we go. And then trim it up so I've got a nice neat end. And you want this pretty snug. You don't want it real soft because otherwise it's going to start popping to the advantage. As you can see, this makes it really sturdy and strong for pounding and hammering. And there's nothing like putting a couple of these in the hands of some energetic three, four, and five year olds and turning them loose on their older brothers. Great entertainment. There's hammer number one.